on this episode of Gadget. We're bringing you a new paradigm for network-attached UberGeek storage with the QNAP TS209. We'd like to thank our production sponsors, the University Catholic Center, the California Province of the Society of Jesus, and Gateway. Hello, and welcome back to Gadget at thetechstop.net. It's the place where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm your host, Father Robert Balliser of the Society of Jesus, the California province of the Jesuits. We're the largest religious order in the Catholic Church, and we're here in the Center for Apostolic Technology at the University Catholic Center, located on the campus of the University of Hawaii. Now, I want to start off by giving a shout-out to our peeps over at Ergotron, who have actually uh, let us hold on to the NeoFlex mobile workspace for a while. It's a, it's a great piece of gear for us to, to move around. Uh, you may have noticed that our offices are a little bit cramped, a little bit crowded. And, uh, well, this is just going to allow us to move from area to area in the UCC and at the Jesuit residence so that we can, uh, well, set up the way that we need to set up in order to give you your gadget goodness. Today, we've got a little box from uh, our friends over at QNAP. Now, QNAP's a small company that we actually met at CES 2008 in Las Vegas. And uh, they had a line of storage devices. Now, storage devices, even network-attached storage devices, are nothing new. But the QNAP series of network-attached storage boxes has a combination of style, of size, of function, of, of ergonomics, of, of just nice and quiet operation, and features and that I haven't seen since the early days when we did a review of the Infrant, now Netgear ReadyNAS. The QNAP TS209 is a network-attached storage box that gives you a two-drive hot-swappable SATA RAID array and a stylish and yet quiet enclosure. The 209 is about half the size of a shoebox or the size of a full shoebox if you have really small feet. It weighs about 5 pounds fully loaded and is constructed of brushed aluminum. It features a 500 MHz CPU, 128 MB of DDR2 system memory, 8 MB of flash for the operating system, a single gigabit Ethernet port, and three USB 2.0 connectors, two in the back and one in the front. The 209 is based on a Linux OS and supports Windows and Mac clients. Out of the box, the array is driveless, but it's compatible with most SATA drives from the major manufacturers. We tested the 209 with everything from an 80 GB Mac store drive to a 1 terabyte drive from Seagate with no trouble. The 209 has two hard drive caddies that are held in place by a set of thumb screws. QNAP has been nice enough to label both the caddies and the array slots to make swapping the drives simple. Once the caddies are out, you mount your SATA drives into the sleds, lock them into place with the included low profile screws, and insert them into the appropriate drive bay. The back of the 209 is sparse. Aside from the cooling fan, you will find the power connector, the gigabit ethernet port, two USB ports, and a Kensington lock port for securing your array. The first time the array powers up, it will check the drives and prepare the array for use. A string of LED lights on the front of the unit gives you an at-a-glance status of power, network link, drive status, and activity. The unit only has three buttons, a reset button in the back, and power and one-touch copy buttons up front. This gives the unit an uncluttered look and creates a simple user experience. The USB ports on the 209 can be used to connect an external USB hard drive, USB printer, flash drive, digital camera, memory card reader, and just about any other USB storage device. Installing the 209 starts with the Finder application. Load this lightweight program onto your computer and it tells you what QNAP devices are on your network. If you use the wizard, you will be taken through the process of setting the admin password, naming the device, configuring the network, and choosing what type of array you want the 209 to create. You can choose to stripe the array in RAID 0, giving you faster performance and the full amount of storage, but much less data security. If either one of the drives fail, you'll lose everything. You can also choose to mirror your drive in RAID 1, essentially giving you two identical sets of data. This is slower and cuts your usable space in half, but it is far more secure as you can suffer a drive failure and still not lose any of your data. If any of the drives does fail, simply power down the unit, replace the failed drive, and power it back up. The 209 will automatically resync your data. You can also have the 209 set up a linear disk volume, a JBOT, or just a bunch of disks, 
which will give you two different drives in the same array. This isn't as fast as striping and doesn't give you the redundancy of mirroring, but you do get to keep the maximum storage without risking the loss of all your data with a single drive failure. Backup is one of the strong points of the 209. It includes the NetBack Replicator, a software suite that allows users to set up auto-sync and scheduled backups. The one-touch backup button is actually quite useful. You can configure it to copy everything from a USB device to a directory on the QNAP, or everything in a directory on the QNAP to a USB device. This is especially useful if you want the QNAP as a backup device for your USB-enabled camera, music player, or flash drive. QNAP has also included the option to do scheduled or immediate backups of your data to a remote network drive or a USB storage device. Backup options are topped off by a remote replication feature which allows the 209 to automatically backup its data to a remote QNAP device. This is the ultimate in backups because it guarantees the integrity of your data at a location that is limited only by the reach of the internet. While the hardware of the 209 is impressive in both its simplicity and its performance, it's the built-in services that set the QNAP products apart. The 209 supports all of the features that you might expect from a high-performance NAS. This includes FTP, secure FTP, and standard file sharing protocols. It also has support for universal plug-and-play and DLNA multimedia streaming, iTunes server support, and auto-photo album generation. Where the 209 leaves the realm of the standard and enters the world of the UberGeek is its integrated support by dynamic web serving, PHP code execution, and MySQL databases. That's right. This hobbit-sized box can host your dynamic website, blog, PHP MySQL photo album, or web form entirely on its own. The TS-209 comes loaded with Joomla, a popular open source content manager, but I was able to easily load the customized WordPress directory that runs the tech stop. After a quick database restore, I had a fully functional copy of the tech stop running on the local drive. Even better is the native support for BitTorrent. You can now download the latest, greatest, and legal content without a PC. Simply drop in the torrent file and wait for your media to finish downloading. We found the diskless QNAP TS-209 online for about $350. I'm actually very impressed with the TS-209 from QNAP. It's not the fastest NAS box that I've ever tested. It's not the most compact NAS box that we've ever had in the lab. It's not even the best built box on the market. But what they have found is that sort of secret sauce, that, that junction between performance and style and price that makes it accessible. And anything that becomes accessible to Uber Geeks, we like. I mean, the fact that it's quiet, it's in operation right now. You might be able to pick up the hum a tiny bit on the mic, but probably not a whole lot. And it's incredibly power efficient. In fact, we're running it right now at idle at 8 watts. I mean, a box that can run idle at 8 watts, and when it's running typical operation, it's using about 15 to 20. And at its max, if it's just thrashing with huge hard drives, it uses 30 watts. I mean, that's fantastic for a two-drive array. Top that off with the fact that they have made it hackable. I mean, they want people to tear this thing apart. It's running a Linux OS. It's, it's possible to get in here and play with the features and the functionality and add bits and pieces, the things that you need to make it work. It's just very, very cool. You know, top that off with the, the, uh, the built-in BitTorrent functionality so that you can automatically download your legal podcasts and media files from the internet without having to use a computer. The fact that I can run my entire website or a forum site or have some sort of test station that I can use without having to have a dedicated server, without having to have a dedicated PC, and I can have everything in a nice little box that will run in a mirrored RAID array so that I won't lose anything. I'll just be able to swap out a failed drive, plug in a new one, and go. You know, if, if we start looking in terms of performance, what we saw was typically with the jumbo frames turned on, we were able to transfer about 5 gigabytes of data over the gigabit Ethernet into a mirrored array in about 6 to 7 minutes. When we used a striped array, so that's the two drives connected together, we were actually able to cut that down to about 6 minutes. And when we had all the performance options turned on, I mean everything tweaked as tight as we could get it, we got about 5 gigabytes of data in about five and a half minutes. That's, that's not bad. Again, not the greatest performance that we've ever seen, but wonderful for a product of this price. If you're looking for a NAS, 
a low price NAS, an entry level NAS to a medium business type box that doesn't skimp on the options, that, that isn't going to cripple your, your network transfers, then you may want to give the QNAP products a, a, a closer look. You can go to their website at www.qnap.com and you'll be able to see the full line, and they do have a lot of products of network attached storage goodness that they can bring Uber Geeks around the world. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of Gadget. I've been your host, Father Robert Balazer. This has been the Center for Apostolic Technology. And remember, there's no Uber Geek without you. <laughs>